In this video, we're going to cover a relatively common issue that new users will often encounter when you want to bring in a low polygon object into the Sculpt workspace of 3D Coat. Now, if you simply wanted to do some texture painting or UV editing from the splash screen, you have task-centric options to choose from, and it will put you in the right workspace. Okay, so again, if I wanted to paint on a UV mapped model, I would click that and bring the file in that I want to import. In this case, I want to bring a low polygon model in to the 3D Coat Sculpting workspace where I can use the voxel modeling tools or maybe just do a little bit of embellishing with some of the sculpt tools. So I'll click on Surface Sculpting. Again, I can choose from the presets here, choose from a file. Let's start from a blank canvas and in the object section of your tool panel, let's choose import. You can choose select mesh. Another option is to go to the file menu, choose import. You have a number of different options here as well. And then a third option is to click on the thumbnails in your model's palette, which will bring up models that you've stored on your hard drive. Okay, so let's click on this turret. And if I wanted to bring this model in as a voxel object, there are a few considerations that I need to keep in mind. 3D Coat has two primary modes to work in in this environment. One is voxels, the other is surface mode. Surface mode is geometry only. There are no voxels, there is no volumetric data being stored. With voxels, you're working with pixels, really. It's just those pixels are 3D in nature. And so as you are working in voxels, you might see an outer mesh, but that's not something for a user to be concerned with. As you're brushing or as you're working, 3D Coat adapts that mesh to fit the volume. So you never see the actual voxels themselves. 3D Coat is adapting that mesh to fit in real time. Now, what are the considerations that we need to keep in mind? Well, one is determining how you want to apply resolution to your model before you commit it to a layer. This is much like working in Photoshop. If you have one high resolution document and you're trying to copy or bring that pixel data into an existing document, you want to ensure that that existing document has enough scale or resolution to maintain all that data. So. When you're working with voxels, the larger the scale, the larger the resolution when you commit it to a layer. The other way of applying resolution is to simply click on increase resolution here at the bottom. At the bottom of your tool options panel, that icon is basically the same as res plus. Okay, so it's going to basically double the resolution on that layer before you commit it. If I'm in voxel mode and I click on this object, I'm going to, actually I'm going to scale it down. I'll just show it by example. And if I hit apply, I'm going to select another tool to drop that preview object. And you can see I don't have enough resolution to maintain all that detail. So let me clear this layer. I'm going to hit the space bar and choose clear. Additionally, I could just scroll to the bottom of the tool panel and click clear. So this time, let me click increase resolution. I'll select that one more time and now hit apply. You can see I don't have quite enough, but I have more than what I did previously. So once more, I'll just clear this layer, increase the resolution, and maybe once more, and now I'll click on my object, hit the enter key or apply. Just by increasing the resolution on the layer before I commit it, it helps to ensure that all that detail I had on the original model is preserved. Okay, so that's very important to remember. 
And when you see this preview object like this and you're not sure whether or not you've got the voxels already committed on this layer, you can look to the very bottom here and look at the polygon count, the current object triangles. If, if you have zero, then you know that's a blank layer. Okay? So the other way we could do this, I'm going to create a new layer here. And I'll just delete that one. And this time, I'm going to simply just increase the scale of this object. I'm not going to increase the resolution on this layer. I'm just going to scale this object up. You want to be careful about this because if you go too large, then it may take forever. And 3D Coat could even crash you know, depending on your system resources and, and so on. You want to be a little bit modest about it first. So I think that's enough. And once I think I have the appropriate scale, I can hit the Apply button or the Enter key in order to commit it to a layer. I can now switch to Surface Mode if I want to continue working in that particular mode. It's pretty interchangeable. So what I'm going to do now is clear that layer. And I'm going to click on this model again, Auto Scale. And this time, when I import, I want to choose Import Without Voxelization. And then what's going to happen is that's going to bring it in as a surface mode object. That means whatever your model looked like when you exported it from your host application, it's going to look exactly like that here. Most of the time, that's the mode to choose. But as you'll see here, if it's really low polygon in nature, then when you try to subdivide or increase the resolution, you're going to have the same issues that you would have in a standard 3D application when you apply subdivision to a very low polygon model. As you probably already know, when you have low polygon models in a standard 3D application, when you apply a subdivision modifier to it, it's going to introduce a great deal of curvature wherever you have a low concentration of polygons. So that means if you want to preserve detail on a model or preserve hard edges, then to keep that curvature from affecting those hard edges, you need to add extra geometry or edge loops in those particular areas to preserve that detail. So it's a pretty common method, but in this case, that could be very time consuming on a model like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at this issue. If I zoom in and I simply hit apply. I'll select a brush here and you can see with wireframe turned on this is very very low poly. It's been decimated to a high degree and if I try to increase the resolution now I'm going to have the same kind of issues I would have in a standard 3D application. It's really not what I want. You can see all kinds of uh, geometry issues here. So that means I need to introduce voxels into this equation. So let me clear that object. I'll select this model one more time. And again, basically this is just a preview until I commit it, until I hit apply or the enter key. And so with surface mode, you don't have to worry about resolution on the layer. You don't have to worry about scale. Again, it's going to come in exactly the same way it appears in your host application. But I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and step out of that tool. Turn my wireframe back on. And there's a dirty little trick here that you can use to go ahead and voxelize this and that way 3D Coat will preserve all the detail that I need. So let me go ahead and hit the Enter key. And 3D Coat is asking, how much resolution do you want? It's basically letting you know that it's going to voxelize this object, and it needs to know how much resolution to apply to it. In this case, 72,000 is not enough. It needs a lot more than that. Let's try 5 million. OK. What it did is it filled that entire object with voxels and it returned it to surface mode all on the fly. 
And with that, we will conclude this look at importing low polygon objects into the Sculpt workspace in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.